Hello, fellow chocolates. What's up? Uh, I haven't made a video in a minute. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial video. I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, barricades, doors, uh, ways to stop zombies from coming at you. Um, and code them into your mutations, your custom mutation scripts. And then uh, play them with your friends and stuff. You, The only prerequisite is the first um introductory uh left for dead how to make mutations video i'll put a link <laughs> it's right here uh, uh if you watch that it'll give you just the basic knowledge you need for this video um but if you watch that video then you are ready to go so without further ado um let's jump right into it see you in the video All right, so for this one, we're going to be making, like, uh, a build system. A couple different ways you can go about doing this. Uh, well, there's probably a thousand ways you can go about doing this. So, we'll, we'll start with the simplest way, and then we'll expand from there. I'm just going <laughs> to jump right into it. Um, okay. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, scripts. V scripts. Copy the... Test file. Build style. Style. Build style. Open it up with your preferred editing software. Let me get to go to modes. Copy your test file. Make the mode. Call it build style. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm also going to edit this notepad. Alright, so for the mode style, don't forget to... For the mode. <laughs> mode style. For the mode, don't forget to change the name. Build to the name you made it. Build style. Co-op. So this mutation uh, has definitely a more survival-esque vibe. You know, building barricades, stuff like that. So you can make it whatever you want. Realism versus. But I'm going to do survival. Co-op would be just campaign. Um, build mode style <laughs> that'll that's what it'll show up like in game description um survive build destroy survive um put your name you guys know this stuff doesn't really this doesn't really matter um this though is you know we've been over this this is where you put those uh these babies, the convars. So, uh, I like to use this. I would recommend putting in no bots. Just because the bots will tend to destroy the barricades. It's a little annoying. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So, first way we can go about doing this, or that I originally learned how to do this, was by using chat triggers. Chat triggers are really simple. They're pretty much just, they're a function. Function. There are a function called chat triggers, uh, capital, double colon. Uh, it's when you type something in chat. So we're going to do wall. This is the word you type into chat. You use an, excla <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> use an exclamation point followed by the word. Um, it needs a couple parameters. These aren't that important. This, though, is. This is the player who's like typing it. Uh, alrighty, make your little curlies. Alright, what we're going to do to make the barricade, the first barricade, is we're going to get our position of our player. We're going to get the looking location. Now, you could do get location, but that'll get your current position, which is not exactly what you want. You want to get where you're looking. So you can make the barricade there. Okay, so we're just getting the looking location. And we're getting the angle, so it'll face the correct way that our player is facing. Player dot get angles. All right, then we're gonna check if the play. Whoa, if the player is not equal to null, uh, if it exists, then we're gonna spawn it. So there's a there's a function in there, in that vscript library, called spawn. Bunch of things you can spawn. 
Uh, first way we're gonna first thing we're gonna cover really is the spawn door feature. So I figured out when I first started coding that you can spawn doors, and well, I didn't figure it out. It just I when I was experimenting, I came across this feature and I thought it was really cool. You can spawn doors, and all you have to do is get a model, um, which by the way, uh, there's a cool someone did a really really nice thing. This guy. These two, these three lovely souls here, uh, took their time to submit a huge list of props for Left 4 Dead, which is really, really useful. So you don't have to go into like the authoring tools and find them. So you can look up doors uh, in here. I'm sure, yeah, literally right here. Um, yeah, it's a great resource. I'll put it in the link. Anyway, so we are going to do the, there is a barricade, uh, which is really, really cool. That it's uh, an actual thing in the game already. Under props, buildables, plank underscore barricade. Dot MDL. <clears throat> just like that. Also, just a heads up, when you uh, import these, a lot of the slashes are backwards. Like if you put this backslash, I don't believe it'll work. You just got to be careful of that. Anyway. You need your position, so it's looking for two things. Your position, which we have, and your angle, which we have. So we can semicolon that. So spawn a door with this position, with this angle. And then I like, for a little bit of um, clarity, and just because it's fun, you can play a sound uh, like you're building it. Wood underscore plank dot break. You can find these sound names and sounds in uh, the hammer, Left 4 Dead hammer, Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools. I like this one. It sounds like you're like building. So, uh, player, capital, play sound. This will play it to just the player that's building and who wrote the thing. All right. I've, sp I've said enough. Let's, uh, let's, um, let's see this in action. So, look somewhere. Type exclamation point, the name, and there you go. And it even plays the funny noise. Pretty cool, right? And check it. They're doors. So, I mean, theoretically, you could reposition them and, and open them. And the coolest part is, they're destructible. That's the whole point. Here they come. dead <laughs> they've reached our defenses but as you can see if you were fighting say i'm being chased by a bunch of zombies uh, i'm being chased by a bunch of zombies to have to stop and type wall it's not very efficient like obviously it's you know there's definitely better ways to do it so let's uh examine one of those right now all right so another cool way you can do the barricades is through like kind of like a toolbox system um so you know like uh, the incendiary ammo? Well, basically uh, it's useless and it doesn't do anything. Um, at least I personally think. Uh, so I thought it would be really cool if you could use the incendiary ammo and the explosive ammo as like a toolbox that you actually use to deploy the barricades and like build them. I really like that system. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it. So uh, we're going to change a few things. We're going to change this function. We're going to make it function notifications, so the classic event system. On upgrade deployed, and this can be found in here in easy logic. A lot of these functions can be found right here. So on upgrade deployed is somewhere in here. Uh, let's see. All right, on upgrade deployed, uh, I'll give it a name, just build, build mode. Deployer, that's two. Upgrade, the type of upgrade, and then the parameters. So, when you deploy the incendiary ammo box or explosive ammo box, um, this uh, function will trigger. We're going to check if this is very similar to, well, it is literally the same thing. If deployer is not equal to null, just because I'm a little, yeah, you know, you know what I am. I'm just going to change all these. 
to deployer. Any reference I had to deployer. So getting rid of that, we want this to look like this. Let's see. Hitting tab, tab, tab. So let's clean it up a little bit. If the deployer is equal to null, so if you exist, check the position of the deployer. That's you. Uh, check the angle um, and spawn the door, just like usual. So this should do the exact same thing, but just when you deploy the upgrade. Uh, deploy the upgrade. Um, the, however, though, once you deploy the upgrade, you lose it. So you'd need to do some sort of function that says deployer.give weapon upgrade pack and the name explosive. So this will just give you a pack back. So if I deploy an ammo pack or whatever, I just get it right back after I deploy it. So you can keep making barricades with it. That's that's how you do that. The other cool thing um, we can do is we can, because uh, otherwise this actually will deploy an ammo. So if I deploy explosive ammo right now, there'll be a box of ammo and then there'll be a barricade. So what you really want to do is you actually want to get rid of the ammo. So you can say if, if upgrade is not equal to null. So if the upgrade exists that you just deployed, upgrade.kill. And this will just get rid of it. So that way the box will look like it's actually deploying a barricade instead of an ammo. Now, bear in mind, it means you can't deploy these the ammo boxes the way you used to. But I think this is way cooler, not gonna lie. Anyway, so let's test this out. Some Pick it up. Rounds. It should be a toolbox. Check for errors. I don't see any. Uh, and then deploy. It's pretty cool, right? And it gives us one back. Isn't that sick? It's just like a door, just like the other ones. And remember, it's where you're looking. So if I look over there, when I finish, that's where it deploys. Grabbing some frag rounds. Whole point is so you can barricade. It's pretty cool. You can also look at the window wall here and make like you know wall barricades which looks sick i mean the shadows are fucked up but it's kind of cool and zombies will break these before they bust it through the window yeah pretty cool if you don't like the opening door mechanic like the fact that they swing open um you can change that and you can also change a lot of other features so if you go to the list of left 4 dead entity entities this is basically every entity you can make. So, so you can actually look up prop door rotating right there. Prop door rotating. Uh, so what this is doing, what we're doing right here, is we're basically letting the vscript library just spawn a door, which is like a pre convenient way to just spawn a pre-made. This is just like a prop door rotating. That's all this really is. But you can get a little more fancy with the spices and do it yourself. And that way you can apply a lot of these multi uh, effects. It's a lot to look at, but don't really don't worry about it. The one we want is the da 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 do. So these are all key values. They basically let you change stuff. But we really want the flags, the spawn flags. So by putting in these codes, you can apply these effects. So we can have them start locked, and we can have them be silent. So. Uh, let's see. We're going to have to kind of rework this whole thing, though. Okay, first things first, we're going to... We're going to now make a new line called local keys. This is our new variable. We're going to tell keys. The keys is going to be equal to this. Instead of storing the model here, it's actually going to store the model in our key values. Under model. We're going to set that equal to our model. Then... We're going to say this is not, oh, this is this is still a utility. We're actually going to make a new variable, and we're going to call it local barricade equals, and this is just going to tell us like what the barricade, like we're going to set something equal to barricade, basically. We're going to store something in there, and we can reference it later, which is really cool. Utilities, we're going to create an entity, and that's like that list I was just showing you. We're going to call it a prop door rotating, all underscores, no capitals. That's the type of entity. Then it's going to store three values. The position, like our look position, our angle, and the key values. So we're literally doing the exact same thing, except we've just changed uh, uh, our model and just put it up here, basically. This allows us to now add, whoops, 
spawn flags. Spawn flags. And we're going to set this equal to those two codes we looked at earlier. Starts locked and door silent. So those codes are 2048. And separate, separate them with a space, I believe. And then 4096. And then semi. No, you do not need a semicolon. No semicolon. So this should, no sound, and is locked. So just makes them a little more, like I said, a little more smooth, a little more streamlined. So in testing, we grab the incendiary box here, build it. Hold up a minute. You'll notice I can't open these anymore. They don't make that noise. They still make the sounds of being destroyed, but they don't make the, like, creak noise when I open it. And opening doesn't do anything because they're locked. So, if you like that, um, we can take it a step further, actually. So, if you noticed, uh, when I made, when I grabbed the incendiary box, it actually became an explosive ammo. That's because of this line. Well, theoretically, since there's two boxes, you could technically spawn different types of objects. You don't have to stop at one barricade. You could have two things you could make with one being under one box and one being under the other. For example, you could have a turret, which honestly would take two seconds, and that's in here. Spawn minigun. And you could just literally plug that all in. You could uh, spawn a fuel barrel. That'd be pretty fun, actually. Because then you could just start putting those everywhere and then blow them up. You could spawn ammo. You could make it so the box actually spawns ammo instead. Or you could spawn any object. Which is insane. I will tell you this. The objects that are destroyable, that are breakable by the zombies, there's only so many of them. The ones I like the most, and I can put them on the screen, and the cool thing is with these is you can actually like create different types of barricades, which is really cool, that have like different properties. So uh, we could go and we could do a check for uh, what type of upgrade you actually place, so we could say if upgrade dot get class name capital is equal to if you placed a uh, explo explosive upgrade underscore ammo underscore explosive upgrade you can uh, grab all this and hit tab to move it all at the same time so if you place an explosive upgrade um, Give yourself the explosive back. Also, this will happen no matter what, so we don't need this inside here. It should look like that. Then, in uh, else, so if the upgrade uh, uh, is explosive, uh, give yourself the explosive. Else, if it's the other one, if it's incendiary, then just give yourself the incendiary. Weapon. Upgrade pack. Incendiary. There we go. Simple as that, and we'll always kill it no matter what. But to check which one you're using, you may need to change this a little bit. 2,000 years later. All right, so we're going to say, when you spawn, blah, 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 get your stuff. If it's an explosive um, upgrade then spawn the barricade do it make the plank sound give yourself the useless ammo else if it's the other thing do all this again so copy all this except this bottom line so copy all this copy that paste it down here do all this again except don't spawn the barricade spawn models underscore props underscore urban slash fence zero zero two underscore one twenty eight underscore breakable dot mdl so this is the fence um and then you can 
rename this uh, fence. Fence. Same stuff. Um, and then instead of the wood break sound, let's do this metal underscore, underscore barrel underscore bullet impact, which kind of sounds like a metal like ding noise, which which might be good. So I can zoom out a little so you can see this whole thing. Uh, wh so this is our like new refined script. Um, yeah, it'll check which ammo type you have, explosive or incendiary, and then based on that, it'll spawn a different object, which is really cool. And you can go all out with this. You can have the second one spawn a turret instead. You could have the first one spawn a landmine. I've messed with barbed wire before. All right, let's uh, let's test this out. Let's do the explosive first. So the explosive should spawn our classic barricade. Can't open it, just like before. And it gave us the explosive back. So let's just try that again. There we go. But our incendiary one should give us the fence. Hold up. Some of these will build on a weird angle, but it's pretty cool, right? Can't open it. I can shoot through it. Pretty sick, right? Looks really good. But yeah, so pretty cool. Um, oh, hey gamers, sorry. One last thing, I almost forgot. So if you want to, if you noticed uh, while you're testing, some of the barricades are destroyed really quickly because they're doors. Like doors get destroyed really fast by zombies. So if you want to ever change how fast or how much health the doors have, one way I figured out that kind of works is uh, you can add this va uh, uh, variable to your mode file. Z pound, Z underscore door underscore pound underscore damage. 60 is what they're doing right now. So they're smashing it for 60. I believe if you drop this, you can cut it down to 20. It works significantly better. They, they hold up a lot longer. Um... I like this number, so I've been using 20. Also, you can change how long it takes to uh, actually place the upgrades. You can change this. So right now, I believe it's at 1.9. That's the upgrade pack use duration. If you set this to something higher, so if you think it's too strong, the players are building barricades too fast, you think it's a little too broken, you can increase this number, or you could drop it down if you want to be able to place them faster. You can even use like tactical barricades. like You can place them almost instantly with... Uh, Something like 3 or 4.5. But anyway, um, yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there. It's kind of important. All right, good luck with everything. But yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with them. Uh, but yeah, tell me, let me know what you think, please. I love the comments. If you get stuck, anything like that, just please. I'll always, I usually always respond. I have nothing better to do. <laughs> no, but I like it. It's really fun. I love... Um, Interact with my lovely community. Uh, and oh, and I also want to say thanks again for the 50 subscribers. It means a lot. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you thought it was cool. Take it easy. Keep it real. I think that's enough. All right. See you.